I'll walk through the code for this project to show you how to animate the color of a NeoPixel over time. And first I'll show you a little bit about the theory. So this code is based on linear interpolation, which is just a way to figure out the in-between values from a starting and ending point. So if you look at Wikipedia here, this gives you a deeper explanation of linear interpolation. But on the right, this picture just shows a starting point and an ending point. And then linear interpolation tells you how to figure out all of the values that lie on the line that, for, that joins those two points. So if you think of the animation here with time as the axis on the bottom and color as the axis on the left, then as I change time, I can use linear interpolation to figure out what my color value should be in between the starting and ending color. And to make this a little more clear, I made a few demos to show linear interpolation. So this demo is just showing linear interpolation in one dimension. And as I change this time value, you can see the red ball on the bottom changes its position because I'm using linear interpolation to interpolate from the time position, the position of the ball. And you can also see the equations on the right here are updating. And this equation is just directly from Wikipedia. And it's showing how given the start and end position of the ball and the start and end position of time and the current time, I can calculate the new position of the ball. And this walks through that whole derivation here uh, of the current ball position so that if I go back to time zero, then you can see that it works out to be zero because my current time ends up being zero and multiplies this value by zero. Or if I go all the way to the end where my time is 1.0, then you can see how, again, it's just 1.0 times 400, and that gives me the ball position of 400. So based on this, just by changing this time value, I'm changing the position of the ball below there. And I can change some of these other parameters. So for example, if I want to change the starting position to be a little bit further, now you can see how the y start value has changed to 100 and how the equation is updated here. So now my start is 100 and everything is offset by 100. And so when I change time, now I go just from that 100 to 400 range. And you can even do more with this. I can say, for example, if I want to go from 400 to 0, how this changes. And now I'm actually changing the direction of the ball. So even though time is still going forward from 0 to 1, the position of the ball is going backwards from 400 to 200. And that's just because I've changed these parameters here. So my starting parameter for the ball position is 400, and the ending parameter is 0. And as I change this, you can see how the equation works because it's figuring out the distance, and the distance here is actually negative, and multiplying that by time. And so now I'm actually subtracting the position here to figure out the new ball position. And so this is just showing you that based on one dimension like time, I can calculate another dimension like the position of a ball. And now if I apply this to colors, so with a color you have three components. You have the red, green, and blue components that make up a color. And if I want to do a similar thing here, I can use linear interpolation based on time to interpolate a start and end color. So here I have a start color that has a red, green, and blue component to it, and an end color that has also a red, green, and blue component. And time again is just 0 to 1.0. And you can see as I change time, it's changing the color that's interpolated. So you can see that this points to the new in-between color, uh, and the actual color here is in the middle of the ball. So if I go all the way to the end, now I'm at the end color. But if I go back to the start, I'm at the start color. And you can see again how the equations here just derive uh, the actual color value using linear interpolation. And it's the exact same equation as you saw in the previous demo. Uh, now I just have it three times. So there's one equation for the red, one for the green, and one for the blue color, just based on their starting and ending colors here. And the time value, again, is multiplied by that to give me the interpolated color. So now as I drag time, uh, I also change the color. And again, I can change the start and end colors here. So for example, uh, if I wanted to start from, let's say, a red color and end on black, then you can see how I change the values, how the starting and ending colors here change, and how those feed into the equations down here. And now when I move forward through time, I get closer to the end value of zero. And when I'm all the way at the end, I'm at an end color that's uh, completely zero. So if this was a NeoPixel, it would be dark at that point. So using this, it's really simple then to just animate time going forward and changing the color based on that time using linear interpolation. 
And if we go back to the code, that's exactly what this function is doing. So the animate gradient fill function, this takes in a NeoPixel strip and then a start color given its red, green, and blue components, an end color given the red, green, and blue components also, and a total duration in milliseconds. And that's how long this animation should run. So for example, if I wanted this to run for two seconds, I can send in a duration of 2,000 milliseconds. Now the actual function itself, the main part of it is just a while loop here, where I'm looping over time. So I start out at the starting color with the first fill pixels color call, and then I take the current time and I figure out how much time has elapsed since my previous loop. And that's what this delta variable will hold. So delta is going to hold how long I've executed this function. And uh, the while loop will loop until I've executed this function for exactly the duration that's been specified. So if it's two seconds or one second or maybe even 200 milliseconds, the while loop will only run for that length of time. And inside of the loop, I figure out that zero to one time position value. And I do that just using division. So I take my current elapsed time in delta and I divide that by my total time that I expect. So if I've only elapsed 100 milliseconds and I'm waiting to go for 1,000 milliseconds, then this would just be one-tenth. Uh, and that, that would be my time, my t value that I pass into the function. And so given that time value, I can then figure out the interpolated color using this color gradient function. And if we go down and look at the code for this, you can see that it just takes in the start and the end color and then that time position. And so this should be a value from 0 to 1.0. And if it's at 0, it's going to give me the start color. If it's at 1.0, it's going to give me the end color. And enter any intermediate value in between there, it's going to give me an interpolated color. And you can see how it uses this linear interpolation function called lerp to do that. Uh, and so for each of the color components, the red, green, and blue, it calls lerp it passes in the position, that 0 to 1.0 value, tells the start and the end position values, which are just 0 and 1, those are fixed, and then it, t it passes in the start and the end color, so in this case the start red color and the end red color, and uh, the same for the green and blue colors here. And that's all it does to figure out the color, it just calls that linear interpolation function for each of the components based on the position in time from 0 to 1.0. And you can see the actual implementation of that LERP function is exactly what the equation in Wikipedia shows. So this is just calculating based on the starting and the ending uh, positions uh, where what the actual uh, y value should be. And I do a little bit of clamping in here just to make sure that the value passed in for x doesn't exceed the uh, minimum or maximum values. Uh, but that's really all that this does, is it just calculates the value using that linear interpolation function and it returns it back to the color gradient function, which uses all of these values to generate a new color based on that intermediate color with linear interpolation, and that gets passed back into this main loop. So over time, this position value is going to slowly increase from 0 to 1.0 based on how long my duration is, and each time I go through the loop, I'm going to calculate the new color, and then I'm going to set all the NeoPixels using this FillPixels function, and I'll continue on the loop. And then finally, once I break out of the loop, I'll just end on the last color just to make sure that uh, the animation finishes where I expect it to be. So that's how the function works. It just uses linear interpolation to take time and use that to control the color based on a starting and an ending color.